Okay, hi guys, and welcome to the show. Today, we are reviewing another watch from Hemmel, and it's been a few years since I included uh, this absolutely fantastic micro brand. Uh, this is their third release. In fact, actually, let's um, just get the uh, wristwatch check before I, out of the way before I completely forget. Um, but yeah, I'm wearing my official Cosmonaut Chronograph from Fortis, and I have it on a um, NDC strap. This is the only company in the world that uses the real thing as used by the Marine Nationale. So I'll, I'll leave the details in the description, but I think it just matches the tooltastic aesthetic of this uh, no-nonsense space-going legend, I should say. And of course, this is with the earlier the Mania 5100, so very, very special watch indeed, and I, I feel quite, forgive the pun, but over the moon to own it. Anyway, let's uh, crack on with the review. A little bit of background on Hemel. Hemel was started a few years ago. I can't recall the, the precise date, but I did review their Field Watch, which was their first release. And it's run by my good friend Marvin, who has always been a, a, an avid, uh, staunch urban gentry supporter since the very early days. So shout out to, to you, Marvin. Last year, he released his HF series, the Hemel Flight, his first aviation chronograph, which was absolutely fantastic. Unfortunately, I didn't have time to cover it, but I do urge you to check it out. There's a quartz version and an outstanding uh, column wheel chronograph automatic based version, which is just astounding, incredible value for under a thousand dollars. Very classic. Uh, and you'll see there's, there's a consistent appreciation for clean, functional, unpretentious design in all of their offerings. And then finally, um, fast forward to 2018, we have their first dive watch, which is what you see here before you, uh, the HD. So a, a trifecta of land, air, and then finally, um, C. Now there's four flavors available. There's a jet black, all black version. There's one with red dial and bezel and then a green dial and bezel. And then finally here, this is the fourth offering, which at first glance, it looks like it's black, but actually it's the most darkest blue. Oh, there, there, you, see, there you see, it looks blue there. It, it changes from a a kind of navy, and then in a very well-lit room, almost looks like a kind of cobalt blue. So subtle, I've never seen a, a blue hue this dark. Quite magical, and really invokes that oceanic, that deep ocean uh, feel. It's, it's wonderful, the variation uh, and, and the texture you get. So let's get the basic dimensions out of the way, and then we'll uh, talk a little bit more about uh, just why this this is such fascinating design. So it's 42 millimeters in diameter. We got a height of 12 millimeters. Lug to lug is 46, and then a lug width of 22 millimeters. So a very contemporary size, uh, but it's it, I think it's one of those rare pieces, a bit like the Squally 1521 and the SKX, that it wears a lot smaller, and it's going to be a real crowd pleaser when it comes to pleasing a lot of wrists. An entirely stainless steel 316L case that is, I think, entirely brushed. I don't see any polished work with the exception of the back. We'll get to that in a moment because it's absolutely spectacular. So it is entirely brushed apart from the sandblasted uh, finish on the um, actual signed crown, which is really pleasing to see. We have an entirely knurled uh, bezel. The bezel itself is a 120 click. Not that much wobble, to be honest. Uh, it's fairly sturdy. The actual insert is a sapphire glass, as is the domed sapphire glass of the uh, the main glass there. What is interesting about the, the actual sapphire glass, we have a coating in orange for the anti-reflective coating. And this is very, very deliberate. And you'll see in all of the Hemel watches a strong reoccurring theme of orange. And that is because Marvin is of Dutch descent and obviously 
uh, orange being an integral color to the uh, the Dutch, and there you see it in the hand as well. And and you'll see it pop up in every single one of Marvin's designs. The knurling is also on that signed crown with quite a small crown guards, but they do the job marvelously well, and they angle downwards perfectly just to, so you can get a grip on that screw down crown. The action of the screw down crown and threading is. As you'd expect, it's very easy to operate. The watch comes on a stainless steel bracelet. The first two links taper, and then we have, unfortunately, we don't have screwed links. It's just the old school pin. It is entirely brushed as well, and then we have a butterfly deployant sign there, as you can see, Hemel. Uh, the deployant itself is very solid, very responsive and secure, but then we have Probably one of my favorite features, look at that case back. It's not even engraved, it's like a relief. It's, it's, a, it's a work of art in itself. So we have a coat of arms there, we have two uh, hippocampus sea creatures there, and in the center we have a, a, co a coat of arms with Hemel HD series written underneath. This wreath uh, framing it and that beautiful blasted texture contrasting that uh, high polish finish of the actual uh, figures there, and of course, little Neptune's fork, a, a wonderful little heraldic detail here. I mean, absolutely stunning. It's the only bit of ostentatious design we see in the watch. The rest of the watch is a very conservative, but beautifully put together. Basically a nod to some of the most classic dive watches of all time. The bezel insert is very uh, indicative of the uh, blanc pan 50 fathoms, the, the hands itself, we have a, a diamond plunger hand for the hours, very reminiscent of the Plo Prof and the Shom divers from Amiga, of course. And then the dial is a fantastic sandwich dial that very much makes one think of the Panerai. And of course, the 12 o'clock marker as well. The minute hand has a wonderfully segmented sections, very easy to distinguish. And of course we have uh, not just Super Luminova C3 in all of the sandwiched sections, but also in the actual bezel itself. So it's extremely easy. The orientation is perfect because we have the 12 at 12 o'clock in that stencil style, uh, matching the, the military Hemel logo there. And that reminds me of a very good point. All of Hemel's designs are, are, are deeply, deeply military inspired. The six o'clock, we've just got 300 meters and automatic, very simply stated. This is of course a 300 meter water resistant diver. The dial is a matte dark space blue, very bold in its appearance, uncluttered, which is of course is deliberate for its immediate legibility. It's a really beautifully balanced dial, the markers, the, the, the proportions, it's a lot of thought has gone into this. And then we have also minute markings going around the outside of the dial. So as a diver, it, it performs, it does its job absolutely perfectly. So what have we got inside? Well, we have the Miyota 9039, which is of course uh, automatic. If we unscrew the crown to the first position, we have manual wind. If I pull it out all the way, you see the second hand has stopped, so we have hacking. It operates at a lovely 28,800 vibrations an hour, so we get a very nice smooth sweep. It's a 24 joule movement, a healthy 42 hour power reserve. What I also like with the 9039, it has no date, which keeps the dial very uncluttered, but also you don't have the annoying click over of the date at midnight. It's a true no date movement. The accuracy out of the factory is minus 10 to plus 30, although I can happily report that this is operating at about plus seven, which is uh, exceptional uh, considering it's unregulated. Uh, if you do regulate it, you can, uh, you know, you can achieve absolutely fantastic accuracy. What is wonderful about the Miyota 9039 is that it's built like an absolute tank, extremely affordable to maintain and has that um, trusted reliability uh, you come to expect with, uh, with the Miyota movements. So the big question is, how does this bad boy wear? Let's pop it on the wrist and find out several moments later. So on my six and a quarter inch wrist, it wears absolutely perfectly. I was um, a little bit uh, trepidatious because obviously it's a 42 millimeters, but it wears a lot smaller. It's also quite 
slender. The lugs are quite small, however, it does hug the wrist very, very well indeed. Um, it's extremely legible, it's remarkably comfortable. On the bracelet, it's about 168 grams. On the strap uh, or NATO, it's about 100, just over 100 grams, about 108 grams. Very, very solid feeling. The, the perfect dimensions, I've, I've got to say, for even the smaller wrist like mine. Yeah, finally, I don't, I'm not complaining about it being too large. Even though it's not monochromatic, but it's such a dark blue, it's going to be very compatible with a lot of straps. Maybe something... Um, the other more brighter colors are not going to be able to achieve, but I think the jet black would probably be my, um, my pick of the bunch. Anyway, let's uh, summarize the watch. So we'll start with the positives. Uh, well, the quality is there. It's an exceptionally well-made watch. The choice of materials is absolutely superb. You're getting something that is quite distinctive. It's not a homage of anything, which is very reassuring. Uh, I think this is probably Hemmel's strongest offering so far. I think it's quite bewitching to look at. I love the bezel, absolutely adore the bezel. I love its kind of utilitarian, no-nonsense, unpretentious design. And, and talking of design, this is something that Marvin obviously does so well. He comes from a design background. He's an absolutely fascinating chap to talk to, and he knows his watches. I mean, it's an amalgamation of some classic watches, but without just copying them blatantly. It's, it's, it's very original. It's got its own thing going on. Really does evoke the feeling of a, of a blank pan. I love the sandwich dial. It's got a lot of personality. It has a rugged kind of masculine charm. The price is 599 and I think that is fair considering the quality of materials. Functionally, it's fantastic. It's, I love the knurling. It's very easy to grip. He's managed to make quite a big watch that wears marvelously well, even for the smaller wrist. And it's watches like this that really encapsulate what I love about micro brands. You're getting something a little bit different. It isn't just, you know, <sighs> Guys, you've got to understand that there's so many amazing divers out there. It's so difficult to come up with something unique and a little bit different, but at the same time, well, stylistically, it's very, very much based on those classics. But also, I think it has a nice balance of modernity to it. It feels contemporary, but yet it's not just another vintage-inspired diver, which I think, uh, you know, dime a dozen these days. It stands strong on its own, and I really respect Marvin. So, what are the negatives? Well, first of all, uh, as you can see, as I, as I move it around, the orange anti-reflective coating, it's not gonna be to everybody's taste. I actually really, really like it. It, it makes it look quite summery. Um, and I, I, I mean, that, I'm not even sure if that word exists, but you know what I mean. It gives the impression that it's reflecting a sunset. So I really like it, but I can see how some might not approve. Uh, it's quite daring that, that Marvin did that. My big negative really is the bracelet. I'm not a fan of the, uh, this bracelet at all. If we've seen with the Laurier, for watches, costs a lot less. We've seen much more impressive bracelets with uh, screwed links. Um, it's a little bit wobbly. It's also incredibly heavy. It only tapers at the first two links, maybe it's just personal taste, but I really love when a bracelet tapers, cuts down the weight, and also I think it just looks more refined. But ultimately my biggest negative and disappointment is the inability to fit a NATO strap. Now of course you can easily get around this by getting some curved spring bars. And interestingly, I was gonna suggest it would have been nice to have drilled lug holes, but if you look at the position where the spring bars are, there's just not enough space, mainly due to the very short lugs. It's a gift and a curse because the shorter lugs make it fit smaller, but at the same time to the detriment of being able to fit a NATO strap. And this is probably what stopped me buying and purchasing one myself. You guys know I'm, I'm a big, big NATO uh, uh, slut, shall we say. However, I fitted it on a, on a mesh a Milanese style uh, bracelet, which I think complemented it incredibly well. You do get solid end links, I, I must mention that. Um, oh, and I neglect to mention one of my big positives is that sculpted, beautiful case back. It is unlike anything out there. Just exquisitely done. If you want a blank pan 50 fathoms or Panerai, but you don't have the budget, this is a great way to go, and it's original. A few little uh, gripes, but honestly, it's a cracking, cracking watch. I think this is released in November, but you can pre-order it. 
Uh, I highly recommend it, and uh, I'm quite excited to see because he's he's done his trifecta. He's done his land, air, and sea. What's Marvin going to do next? I'm I'm really inquisitive and, and and excited to see. So in conclusion, the Hydro Durance, the HD, it's a fantastic offering. Not perfect, however, still is an absolute gem. Going to leave it there, guys. Uh, let me know your thoughts, queries, comments, opinions, all the rest of it down below. And please don't forget to like this video if you enjoyed it and found it useful. Thank you so much for watching, and I will catch you in the next one. Okay, ciao.